My first workshop trash cans were hand-me-downs from the kitchen. On April 8th, 2019, I upgraded to Slim Jim cans. I figured I could replace these repurposed computer tower wheelie stands with an actual trash can cart and make a video about it. Then, literally two weeks later, a new episode of the Fits All podcast came out, and Jimmy DeResta had a story to tell. He said he heard the boom, and he looked, and there was like a two-foot flame, a ball of flame coming out of the garbage can, out of the metal can. crazy. And it was Why? crazy. So I always have metal garbage cans for this reason. The Slim Jims, of course, are 100% plastic, which isn't going to stand up against a shop fire. But by this point, they were also trashed and well used. So into the shop they stayed. Fast forward to 2022, I finally got moved into the new shop, and I realized that I still needed to be thrifty with my space. So after much searching, I found some compact trash cans that were perfect for the shop. The first one did not survive shipping. The other two did look good. So I thought, okay, now I'll make a video of that trash can cart using these new ones. I wanted to lead with my funny story about the Slim Jim incident, and I figured I'd include a clip of the podcast, but I couldn't find the podcast anywhere. So I wrote into the podcast, except I got my maker podcasts mixed up. Jimmy does the Making It podcast as well as Fits All, and I had just assumed that Jimmy had told this story on the Making It podcast. I'm a Patreon member of Making It, so I wrote into them on Patreon and asked if they remembered what episode this was in. They, of course, couldn't do that because they didn't record it, but instead of saying, uh, not sure that's us, pal, and blowing me off, they actually figured out a way to work it into the show. You did have a topic. Huh. I did, yeah. Uh, life hacks. See, in, in my mind, that, that yeah. is a blanket term for a lot of stuff. Yeah. So what are we talking about? So I'll start the, the ball off. I take metal garbage cans, and I take a two-by-four, and I bandsaw it into a hook, and then I screw it to the underside of the metal trash can lid so that the metal trash can lid is always with the metal can. And the reason I always have a metal trash can is because, God forbid, something in it should catch fire, which has happened in my shop, mm -hmm. and a metal can will sustain a small fire, and then a metal can lid will snuff it out. So that's why I always like metal cans. So that was super cool, of course, and is a major honor to have even possibly inspired a segment on making it. But it also revealed another major problem with my plan. They don't make lids for these trash cans. I never thought to check for that, which is silly because Jimmy actually mentioned it way back in that original Fits All podcast as well. So I always have metal garbage cans for this reason, but the most important thing is to keep a lid on them. So the lid situation still needed to be tackled, but I figured I'd start with the cart. So I drew up a design in Fusion 360. I grabbed this big sheet of wood that is recycled from an old table, and I dropped it in the huge X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt. And I started cutting. A couple of hours in, I realized that the job was going to take six hours to complete. So I stopped it because I didn't really have six hours to spend in the shed at that moment. And I'm glad I did anyway, because even with that six hours, it wasn't cutting all the way through. I think all the glue mixed in with this chipboard is just too much for a laser. So I decided to take it to the Shaper Origin instead. This is actually the first appearance of this machine on the channel. It's basically a handheld computer controlled cutter that tells you where to move based on those stickers. We'll talk more about it in a later video. So this one right here that I ripped, it can't read just with that little bit off of there, which is good to know. But the main thing to note here is that I was actually able to line up the design in the origin on top of the laser marks pretty much 99% and cut in the same spot where the laser had cut previously. This was a bear because there wasn't much material to put down the stickers, so the more I cut away, the less area it could track with. And I was kind of going around in circles, fighting the cords the whole time, but it did get the job done, it worked well. So I took that, Added my name in a year. This is a thing I see Van Neistat do a lot on his work and it makes sense. And I added four casters, though I changed this to six later, just in case the kids go treating this thing like a skateboard at some point. That works. Maybe a little tippy, 
There's probably some things I could do to improve it so the cans don't fall out, but that works. Oh, wow, that is nice. This thing is supposed to hold trash cans, so it doesn't need to look pretty, but I do think I could put a little work into this to make it look more inspiring for getting work done in the workshop. So first I'm gonna use a card scraper and scrape off the previous finish. And then I'm gonna add some banding around the cut edge to hide the chipboard. And I'll add a little bit of finish at this point. Well, that stuff on the top really darkened up, but the sides are just 100% light. <laughs> We're in full bore experiment mode now. So what's gonna happen when I put Minwax penetrating stain over drying shellac? I guess we'll find out. I mean, it doesn't look great, but looks better than it was. I didn't have enough fasteners to use nuts all the way around on the top, but I did have these threaded inserts, so I installed those instead. But the threaded part of the bolt was still sticking up on the top, so I screwed some acorn nuts on top of those. Not necessary, but looks nicer. Now I needed to figure out a way to hold the cans down. some paint off and now the ground is closer to being on bare metal. Let's try this again. Hmm. What the heck is going on here? Okay, bad ground on the can. This paint is really on there. That indeed was the problem. I thought I was getting down to bare metal before, but I wasn't. This is bare metal. Down here looks like it could be, but no, that's not. It needs to be shiny. Andy from the future here. I switched to using a flap disc on an angle grinder, and I did this in about 15 seconds, so don't mess around with the wire brush if you're working on a can like this one. That's looking a lot better. Let's try this again. There we go. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy here. This needs to stick to the can. We're good. got the middle held down but the sides will still pull up.
battery died part way through that. I'm not sure where the recording stopped, but right now I'm just trying to fix my horrible burn holes here. That's looking better, right? I've had to turn the heat way down and I'm getting closer to that bacon frying sound. So that thing looks like it's sick. It needs medicine or something. <laughs> this thing looks like it has a fever and the only prescription is a grinder. But it's holding. Update, the second side was a breeze in comparison. Still not beautiful, but a lot better looking than the other one. Yeah, it's a lot more solid. These aren't coming off. And if I want to get the cans off, I just pop them out. I don't know. Should I do it? Yeah, I better try. Let's see what we can do about this. That left us with a hole again in there. Let me try re-welding that. Update, it's better. There are still some holes that go straight through, but I keep making the holes bigger. As you can see, I've traveled quite a ways up here trying to fill in past holes. We'll see how it looks with the paint. If it's not good enough there, I can cover it over with some Bondo or something and paint it again. We'll see. The important thing is I was able to grind down the welds on the inside and it's smooth in there so it won't rip a bag. Now it's time to tackle the lids. So I looked up the size and I thought I had found something pretty close. But these things are comically big. So I thought, well, could I just cut a slit down the middle of one of these and shrink it? Technically that works, but it looks like a weird silo. And it also involves welding galvanized metal, which I just don't want to mess with that. So plan B is I'll make my own. first plan was to hammer form the lid, but this didn't go so well. I think the main thing was that I was trying to save time and wood and didn't create a full size flat piece for the top to keep the sheet metal squished down. So I ditched that and came up with a slightly less elegant plan for the lids. That'll work.
for handles on the top, I had some old salvaged drawer pulls. I got off of something, I don't remember what. And I made a pattern from the holes in the handle. And I used that pattern to figure out where to drill the holes for that handle and the lid. Done. So now I can put it on the back, or I can put it on the top. In the end, I think this car turned out awesome. It has a utilitarian Laura Kampf-esque style. It rolls around nice, and it doesn't take up much space. The price for those cans isn't great. If you're interested in a cheaper way to do this, let me know because I have some ideas. But for now, Jimmy put out a much more affordable but bigger option that looks great, so check that out too. On to the next one. Thanks for watching.